In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We have a beautiful day today for celebrating, just for, for enjoying God's creation. Well, we continue to celebrate the beginnings of the church now. The Holy Spirit has come on the disciples and missioned them to go forth. And so we're missioned as well. We're to be hearing God's word to go and tell the good news, the good news of God's love for every man, woman, and child. Our God is a merciful God, forgiving and healing God, so we call on that mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Today we'll have our readings from St. Barnabas the Apostle, who is missioned to go forth as well. O God, who decreed the St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, you are our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him back to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church of Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who was a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his
Alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Since we're missioned now to go and tell the good news of God's love and share the good news of God's kingdom, a kingdom of justice, of peace, and of love, the virtue of hope is something we all need to have. And the point of, I have a few lines here I've written about hope. The point of it is we don't always know the outcome of the way we live, but we try to live faithfully and we always live with hope because our hope is not in what we're able to bring about as much as it is in what God wants to do with us and in our lives, and he promises to be with us forever. The first part of this that I'm going to read is about a man whom I know. Uh, he's a Carmelite. All the men in our province know him well. What sustains people who have impossible dreams? I know a man whose life has been dedicated to serving the needs of the poor. He has lived with those who are on the margins of society. He has accompanied people who have been displaced by civil war. He protests on behalf of workers and their rights. He witnesses on borders for more humane policies. He analyzes and speaks strongly against systems of injustice. At the same time, he has heartfelt concern and deep respect for those who suffer in these systems. He admires their humanity and humbly enjoys their friendship. His lifestyle is one with theirs. This man is in his later years now, well in his 90s. Everywhere he turns, the needs are many and the problems are daunting. But he carries on without a hint of discouragement. He is buoyant and gentle those who visit him and listen to him come away with one powerful memory, his frequent silences. He draws his strength from a deep well of hope and faith. And he has no illusions. When he dies, the poor will still be in need. The powerful will still bully the weak. Those on the margins will still be left out. He knows he cannot solve all the problems, but he lives and will die in hope. Hope is a cousin of faith. As we live our pilgrimage of faith, we are always moving into a future not in our control. Some dreams are achievable, and we can clearly see the path to them. Other dreams are too far down the road. We can never clearly see the outcome of our efforts. The Christian who lives in hope lives differently. People of hope always have a future. They live with courage, not hoarding their lives, but generously investing in their God-given gifts. They may tend a small garden in life, as most of us do, but they care for it as though it were Eden. They risk loving and are willing to be challenged and changed by those whom they love. They accept life as it comes at them and find their sanctity in daily fidelity. 
They patiently endure the suffering and loss that's part of life. And they hear St. Paul who says, don't grieve like the rest who have no hope. Christians hope not just for themselves. Our hope is always also for others. They carry deep within themselves the vision of a world at one with God's will, and they pray, thy kingdom come. Jesus announced the reign of God, present in his person, in his teaching, and in his service of his brothers and sisters. The reign of God is present now, but not fully. The fullness of that reign of God will come at the end of time, and then the deepest hopes of humankind for a world of peace, justice, charity, will finally be fulfilled. All of our hopes, small and large, are founded on the one great hope, which is our hope in God and God's promise. Our task is to announce the reign of God. How that reign is finally achieved is God's work. And we announce it chiefly through the way we live and the values that are seen in the way we live. When someone lives with hope, he or she does not need to know the ultimate results of their efforts. Christian hope extends beyond our efforts, beyond our lifetime, even beyond our era. It is based on God's promise to hold all our efforts and all of our lives in a loving embrace and to one day bring all creation to completion. The prophet Isaiah has a beautiful image of that day. A great feast will be prepared on a mountaintop. All the nations of the world will be invited. No one will be left out. Everyone will have their fill. And on this mountaintop, at this banquet, there'll be no more tears. The banquet has begun in Jesus, and we Christians, in word and deed, are expected to invite one another and all of our brothers and sisters to the present and coming Feast of God's Reign. Shall we call to mind intentions we'd like to pray for? That neither language nor culture prove a barrier to the spread of the gospel and the growth of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the wonderfully varied family of nations live together in harmony and mutual respect. We pray to the Lord. That all who speak in different languages understand one another through loving actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit spread and increase here and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that members of this assembly filled with the Holy Spirit may proclaim the good news of Christ Jesus in word and action, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment for personal intentions we may have in our hearts this morning. We pray to the Lord. Jesus is with us on our pilgrimage of faith. The Holy Spirit is with us in gifting us Mary, Mother of the Lord, accompanies us on our pilgrimage. Let's ask her to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Yeah. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Please pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to thank you, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for you've built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. As it is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, Barnabas, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray to be delivered from all evil, so in faith we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. Amen. We wish one another the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, may the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word and my soul nation. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
For a recessional hymn, I wonder if we know We Are Called. That's uh, number 617, 617. We are called. Come live in the light. 617. <clears throat> Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Amen. Come live in the light. Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord. We are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the kingdom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Come, open your heart, show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless, so all hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another to love.